If you've been wondering whether or not you should upgrade to Windows 11, is there a performance increase? Is there a reason to upgrade? Well, that's exactly what I'll be testing today. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right guys, as mentioned in the intro, in today's video, I'll be comparing the latest version of Windows 11 23H2 versus Windows 10 updated to 22H2 to the latest updates. So before I get to my results, let's just, just go over a couple of things I do like about Windows 11. Uh, task Manager, uh, obviously having a black Task Manager is freaking awesome. Um, I think it is pretty damn cool. Um, then as you can see, just everything in black just looks so much nicer. Um, I did notice that uh, Windows 11, look I mean, I did spend some time optimizing. I am using OBS to record this um, this video, so this isn't 100% accurate. But Windows 11 is definitely quite a bit heavier in terms of memory usage as well as CPU usage. Um, I'll show you what I did tweak here and there, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely using a lot more uh, resources than Windows 10. Uh, just to show you quickly. Uh, if you go on Windows 11 in, and if you open up the task manager, you'll probably notice something called aggregator host. Seeing that I don't normally use Windows 11, uh, yeah, I noticed that my game results were a little bit sh uh, more shit with aggregator host enabled. So what I did to get rid of it is first and foremost I installed, what is it, WinEra Tweaker. And then under context menu, where is it? Under context menu, I selected not view owner, take ownership. So I just added take ownership to the context menu so that where is it? In C drive, then I can go to Windows and then just find system 32. And in System32, Aggregator Host, we're just going to find Aggregator Host quickly. Uh, I can't seem to find it now. Can you believe it? Uh, aggregator Host. So once you find Aggregator Host in System32 or Windows System32, what you can do then is just uh, take ownership because remember you added take ownership to the context menu. And once you take ownership, let's close this off. Once you take ownership, then you can rename it. And I just added a one, two, three, so that when I boot into Windows, aggregator host can't start up because the executable name is not changed. Um, and I noticed that my performance did improve a little bit because one thing I noticed is uh, since since the last time I interfaced with Windows 11 it seems to be have become a lot more resource intensive which kind of sucks but there are ways around it so it, disabling aggregator host really does make a difference and then also i went into uh, services let me just show you quickly and then what i like to do is just click on name and then start up top and then, uh, as you can see, I've got a rid of a ton of services here. BitLocker Drive Encryption, I can't stand that. Bluetooth, Device Association Service, Diagnostic Policy Service, Downloaded Maps Manager, all these Intel things, except for the Intel Graphics Command Center and Intel Graphics Control Panel and Intel Audio Service, all the other Intel services are just tracking services. So I get rid of these 100, or oh, well, I stop and I disable them. Um, all the Microsoft Edge services I get rid of, Nahemic, get rid of, Plug and Play, Print Spooler, Program Compatibility Assistant, Shell Hardware, very important, SysMain. I don't play online games, so I just disable and stop TCP IP NetBIOS Helper. Web Threat Defense Service, this also hinders performance quite a bit. Um, uh, when the search, yeah, so once I did that, uh, I noticed that in my task manager, the RAM usage became quite a bit less, 
and then also in one area tweaker what you do is there's a section you just put your split threshold above your ram amount and then once you open up task manager because i noticed in uh, windows 10 the service host packets are quite intense but in windows 11 the service host packets over here are even worse so once you set your split threshold above your ram amount from about 70 to 80 service host packets uh, it goes down to about 20 so you'll notice a big saving on ram uh, so you definitely want to uh, set your split threshold above the ram amount but anyways guys i've gone on for long enough let's get to my results before i get to my results if you're not subscribed to the channel please consider doing so if you are subscribed to my channel make sure that you got the notification bell set to all so that you are notified when i do drop a new video while you're at it smash that like button comment on the video share the video really will help me with the algorithm and then to, for those of you new to my channel you can just go through my own page i've got quite a cool a couple of cool optimization videos but so um guys i only benchmarked 11 games because this whole process did take me quite long so i am not a, uh, a, a masochist so um windows faced off windows 10 windows 11 all my games are tested medium settings with the exception of the the newer titles which i play at low because I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. FSR set to 2.0, or FSR 2.0 is set to quality. As mentioned, I do test on GTX, not RTX, especially when it comes to Windows 11. If you're on a GT, uh, if you're on an RTX card and you've got an 11400H and definitely a 12th generation CPU, I would not use Windows 10. I would highly recommend Windows 11 because that's when you're going to see the benefit from Windows 11. And then lastly, I used the latest NVIDIA driver 546.17 for my testing. So guys, for Windows 10, over those 11 games, I add up all the average FPS, get to 675. Add up all the 1% lows, get to 510. And then add up all the 0.1% lows, get to 427. For Windows 11, those same games with the same settings, when I add up all the average FPS, I get to 677. So two FPS higher, so not really much to uh, yeah, uh, write home about. In terms of 1% lows, it was actually slightly lower than one uh, than Windows 10 for me. It was 507 of those 11 games. And then in terms of the 0.1% lows, uh, it's pretty much neck on neck with uh, Windows 10. So guys, overall, not much to write home about in terms of performance the performance difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 just as of yet. But obviously Windows 10 uh, is not going to get any quality of life updates anymore. So Windows 10 probably won't improve. Whereas Windows 11 will be getting updates. So technically it should be improving. But after two years it hasn't really improved all that much. Well not on my hardware anyway. It might be different for you if you've got newer hardware. So guys I just want to reiterate that. If you got an RTX card and you have a 11400H or higher CPU, so if you got a 12th generation CPU, do not use Windows 10. Use Windows 11 because Windows 11 is optimized for 12th gen and newer hardware. Uh, you're going to be able to get um, uh, auto HDR if you have a HDR uh, um, a monitor. Uh, uh, uh microsoft direct storage i've got a two a terabyte nvme but i don't have an rtx card so i don't have access to uh any of those nice settings or features that come with windows 11. um one thing that i really must say that uh, tell me if you also noticed in windows 11 i noticed that the blacks look a lot nicer and every game that i play just looks a little bit nicer than it does on windows 10. It looks a little bit sharper. I don't. I don't have an HDR compatible uh, monitor, so it can't be auto HDR. But the colors do look crisper, and the visuals do look a little bit nicer on Windows 11. But other than that, I'm still going to stick to Windows 10 because I've got dated hardware. There's no real performance difference for me in any way, and um, yeah, Windows 11 is still a little bit of a, a ball lag to optimize for me. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. 
Guys, it's Tuesday. We're getting into the week. Have a good one. It's people like you. Cheers.